Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question linked cycle two. Sorry, linked list cycle two. All right. So in this question, we're going to be given a linked list and we want to return the node where the cycle begins. And if there is no cycle, we're going to end up returning null. So there is a cycle in a linked list if there is some node in the list, which can be reached by continuously following the next pointer. Internally, a POS is used to denote the index of the node the tail's next pointer is connected to. Note that POS is not passed as one of the parameters. Uh, and notice that you should not modify the linked list and we want to do this in constant memory. All right, so uh, this is one of those questions where I feel like if you don't know the algorithm which is in play uh, for solving this question, you won't really be able to uh, solve it. So the algorithm that we are going to be using is called the Floyd's algorithm. And it's a really simple and uh, kind of intuitive algorithm. So let's take a quick look at how that looks like. So let's start off by building our linked list. So this linked list that we're going to have is just going to be numbers. So we have one pointing to two. Uh, let's point that to three and then four and then five, six. Okay, so that's enough. So now let's look at a condition where this linked list is the end of it. Okay, so after seven over here, seven is going to point to none. So when this happens, there is a certain stop point. So we go to one, two, three, four, five, six. And once we reach to seven, the next uh, value is none. So that means that the linked list has a definitive stopping point. So in this case, uh, we're going to return null for the question. But if this was a cycle, what would happen is this value over here might end up pointing to some other value. So let's say the seven, instead of pointing to null, is actually going to end up pointing to the number, let's say three. Okay. So seven is going to now have a pointer going from seven all the way to three. So basically, in this case, what's happening is we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then from seven, we go to three again, then four, five, six, seven and three. And there's an un, uh, infinite cycle that keeps going on and on. Now, the question is, how exactly do we identify such a cycle? So let's take a quick look at that. All right. So over here, uh, we're going to be having two pointers. OK, and uh, this method, I think you might also be knowing it as the rabbit in the tortoise method. So you have two pointers. One of them is going to be the slow pointer. And we're going to also have one more called the fast pointer. So I'll denote slow with S and fast with F. OK, now both of these pointers over here are going to start off at the head node. And the head node is nothing else but the very starting node. So in this case, it's going to be one. So S and F both start off at one. Now, why is one called slow and why is one called fast? Now, the reason one is called fast is because the fast pointer for every one step that the slow pointer takes, the fast pointer is going to take two steps. So let's see what happens. So in this case, let's go on to the next iteration. So the slow pointer is now going to take one step. So now our slow pointer is going to be over here. So now that the slow pointer took one step, the fast pointer is going to take two steps. So we take one and then we do two. And now our fast pointer is going to be at three. OK, so just to make it easy to understand, let's remove the old values. So let's just keep continuing this uh, pattern. And if we have a cycle, what is going to end up happening is that the fast pointer and the slow pointer are going to end up meeting at some point. So I'll just go through this uh, step by step real quickly and you should see how this happens. So now the slow pointer is going to be over here and the fast pointer is going to be one, two. So now it's at five. So now let's look at the next iteration. So I'll just go to the color green. So over here, the next pointer, so slow would be over here and fast would go one, two, and now it's going to be over here, right? So now uh, I'll just change the color again. And now the slow pointer moves over by one. So the slow pointer is over here. And now the fast pointer is going to move over by two. But now you got to notice that since it's a cycle, it does not end. But what will happen, it goes to three and now it goes to four. So now the fast pointer is right over here. So let's just erase this so it's more clear. So this is where we ended off with. So the fast pointer came to the value four here and the slow pointer is over here. So now let's go to the next iteration. So slow pointer moves by one. And now the fast pointer is going to move by two. So one, two, and now it's going to be here. So one thing that you want to notice what happened is the slow and fast pointer ended up meeting at a point. Now, when they both end up meeting at a certain point, what that's telling us is that we have a cycle. And if we did not end up at the same node at any point, that means we do not have a cycle. So since fast and slow are both at the value six currently at the same node, that means that we do have a cycle. Okay. So that is part one of the question. 
we have a cycle and let's say just for quick uh, comparison so let's say seven actually ended up pointing to none so in that case what's going to happen is once the fast pointer reaches seven it won't have anywhere to go and it will obviously never reach the slow pointer so in that case we're directly just going to return none since we will not have a cycle if that was to if that was what was about to happen so this over here is step one and we got that done okay but now the question is how do we know where the cycle starts at? So to find out, let's just look at this uh, as it is. So the cycle starts at the number three over here, right? And the reason we know that is because seven points all the way back to three and the cycle always starts at the value three. So three is gonna be considered as our starting point. And we wanna understand how can we actually come up or reach to that value. So to do that, what we need to do is we wanna store the value of our fast pointer. So the fast pointer here, we still want to keep that in mind, but we can get rid of the slow pointer, okay? So let's remove this. And again, the fast pointer, like I said, is going to stay in the same place. So the fast pointer ends up staying over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have another pointer, and this another pointer is going to start off at the head node. Okay, so let's call this pointer slow again, just for the sake of, just to make it easy. So now this pointer over here, it's a new pointer and it starts off at the head node. So we're starting it at the head node over here and the fast pointer, we get its value from the previous iteration that we did. So now that we have these values, what we're gonna do each time, both of these values, just ignore their names of slow and fast uh, because that doesn't matter in this case right now. Each iteration, they're both going to move one step. So in this case, the slow pointer is going to move one step. So now it's going to be over here. Uh, simultaneously, the fast pointer is going to move one step and it's going to end up over here. So, so far nothing happened, but now let's go over it again. So now the slow pointer is going to move one more step. So now the slow pointer is over here. And now similarly for the fast pointer, it's also going to move one step. And the fast pointer, the seven points to three. So it's going to go all the way back to the three. So now what you want to notice is that they're both now again at the same point. And this time, whatever point that they are currently on, actually represents what the starting value is. In other words, I'm representing, sorry, uh, I'm talking about this point over here, and that makes sense. So the three is the starting point of our cycle. So once this happens in our second iteration, that means that we have found the starting point. So again, real quickly, we're first finding the cycle using the slow and fast pointers. And if there is not a cycle, we return null. But if there is a cycle, we're going to store the previous fast value that we had. We're going to go on to the next part, which is finding the starting point. And over there, the fast pointer and the new pointer, which starts off at the head, both move by one iteration until they reach a common point. And the common point which they reach is going to be the starting of the cycle, which in this case is the value three. And that's what we end up returning. All right, so hopefully all of that did make sense and let's just code it. It should be pretty simple once you understand how this algorithm over here works. All right, so real quickly, let's start off by doing the first thing, which is finding our cycle. And before we do that, we want to uh, define our variable. So we have a slow pointer and we also have a fast pointer. Now the slow pointer and the fast pointer both start off at the head node. And again, real quickly, the head node start is given to us in our function, okay? So now that we have this over here, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of a while loop and we're going to stay in this while loop until fast has some sort of value. In other words, we're going to stay until a fast is not equal to none. And we're also going to check if fast.next, so the next value is not equal to none. So if both of those values exist, what we're going to do is we're going to end up going inside of our while loop. Now inside of our while loop, the slow pointer over here is going to move by one iteration. So slow is now going to be equal to slow.next. And simultaneously, the fast pointer, instead of moving by one iteration, is going to move by two steps. So fast.next and then one more time, dot next, dot next, since it's moving two steps. Now over here, what we're going to be checking for is we're going to check if the slow pointer and the fast pointer ever end up colliding at a certain point. And if they do end up colliding, we can directly stop it over there and we're going to break out. And at this point, what's going to happen is we're going to store this value of the fast value, right? So the current pointer where the fast value is, is going to be stored and we can use that for the next part. So in this case, uh, if we end up breaking out over there, that means that we do have a cycle. But what if we don't have one? And in that case, we're just going to do an else statement, 
And in that case, we can just directly return none since we do not have a cycle. And that means we're not going to have a starting point for a cycle. Okay, so now we have, uh, we know we have a cycle. And now in this step, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the starting point. And to do that, it's the same step. So instead, what we're going to be doing is I'll be directly referring to the head. Uh, but just to make it simple, let's just come up with a new pointer. So let's just call it pointer. And this new pointer over here is going to start off at the head, okay? And what we're going to be checking for is we're going to go inside of our while loop as long as the pointer is not equal to the fast pointer over here. And while that's happening, our pointer is going to move by one iter one step. So pointer is equal to pointer dot next. And simultaneously, the fast value is also going to move by one pointer. So fast is equal to fast dot next. And we're going to keep going into the into this while loop until we reach a point where pointer is equal to fast. And when we reach that point, all we're going to do is we're going to end up returning our pointer. And that should be it for our solution. So uh, let's just submit this and let's see what happens. Okay. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.